All right, welcome to Mall Framework tutorial number six. We're going to go over uh, Malvern's the config SQF file in his framework. This is the configuration. It's kind of like the um, the control panel of a ship or something, and you're like pushing buttons to control different things, and you're you're wanting to go left, so you push this button. You want to go right, so you push this button. It's it's like the control panel for his framework. All right, so we're in it. And remember, we talked about uh, debug mode. When you're building the mission, it's good to have it in so you can see errors that pop up. Uh, but when you're done with the mission, change this to false. Uh, the mission type, this is going to be a co-op mission, so it's not team versus team, so it stays false. We'll talk about these end conditions later. Um, but, you know, in condition is, let's say you want a time limit for the mission. Uh, this is where you would configure it. If you have a player casualty limit, this is where you configure it. If you have a civilian casualty limit, this is where you configure it. Um, if you were using a ticket respawn system, so let's say uh, Red 4, it was team versus team, Red 4, Blue 4 only had uh, 10 respawns, and finally you ran out of respawns, and... It would, the mission would then fail, or after everyone died on the team that doesn't have respawns, the mission would fail. I think I have to read through uh, to figure to figure that out exactly, but that's basically how it works. Then you have task limits. Um, uh, that's mainly for co-op, how many tasks you need to complete for it to uh, uh, be an in condition. Um, and then you have extraction. So let's say in one of those missions you play where you get extracted by Hilo and it lands on the Hilo pad. Everyone jumps out and like 10 seconds later, the mission completes. Uh, that's what that in condition would control. Um, task threshold is used by the time limit, extraction or tactical withdrawal in conditions. Um, and this is basically saying 60% of the tasks need to be completed. And I think that means for um, like a mission success. And he does have um, like different levels of mission success. I can't remember what they were. It's like uh, like minimum, medium, or and like maximum, I, something like that. I can't remember. We'll go through it later. Respawns. <coughs> Do you want respawns? Uh, yes or no. The timer. T uh, are you using a ticket system? Do you want a wave type of respawn? Uh, how many available waves do you want? And do you remove player corpses upon respawn? He's he's defaultly put it as true. So if you use that, you would use true. Sorry, there's a feather blowing in front of my face. Anyways, view distance. I need to ask him because remember we could set the player view distance in the playable units INI. But right here you have like a server or a global view distance. And, you know, the player's view distance 1,500, and you can set the AI distance to either the same, greater, or more than the player ones. Um, where I see that being used is, is like in um, jungles or like Tanoa or something where the AI really have an advantage because they can th see through and shoot through all that foliage where players have a much harder time. So I would probably play around with that number and reduce the server... Uh, the AI view distance or the server view distance. Time acceleration, uh, if you want time to go by faster. Um, I probably would never play with that, not my kind of missions anyway, so I'd leave that at one. <clears throat> Do you want to use uh, the Ace Spectator instead of the vanilla one for dead players? Default is true. If you want the vanilla one, put it to false. AI skills, these are like I believe vanilla skills um, and it doesn't take into account VCOM skill. So that gets more complicated. If you were just using, you know, the vanilla AI skill, you would, these are what the numbers are going to be. But then as soon as you throw in VCOM, well, then now you're using this plus VCOM. And if you use lambs on top of that, now you're using all three. So you really have to be careful and play around with these um, numbers and and which um, do you want to use, uh, you know, AI mods. Uh, it's too bad that BI's uh, default AI system is 
for lack of a better word, but everybody uses it kind of dumb. And so we rely on LAMS or, or VCOM or some of the other ones. I think the other one was uh, Hunter AI or ASE or I can't remember all of them, but <clears throat> uh, Malvern's framework is configured to use VCOM. That's how he's written it or he's written VCOM into his if you want to use it. And VCOM and LAMS work well together. For these optional modules, we've already talked about Acre. If you're using Acre, this is where you would turn it on. The admin menu, <clears throat> do you, in the admin menu, which is tied to that Steam ID that you put here in the description, uh, HPP, do you want to have access to a full arsenal and do you want to be a curator or Zeus? He leaves both of those on um, default of true, but you can turn those off if you want. Uh, an AI spawner, that's where uh, it's basically a module that, that's, that spawns AI, probably for a certain time limit um, and a certain number. Uh, we would actu actually have to go through and read. So for example, how, how would I figure out what that, what that even means? Um, I would go to his uh, framework, click on mission framework on his GitHub, go to core, and go to AI spawner. And here he talks about it. This module integrates Dread Pirates Awesome, Jebus Just Editor Base Unit Spawning Script. It takes editor base groups and responds them when the group is eliminated. Um, so you probably need to read about this. Uh, this mod and what it does. <clears throat> and then he tells you what needs to be. Um, so you would put like this code in the units INI field or in it field, either in the unit or the group. Like if, you know, the group where it's a, let's say it's a squad and you have that flag that comes off the squad leader, that, uh, that uh, unit icon is the group where you could you could uh, you could put that code in, and <clears throat> he lists the arguments that would also be in there. So um, he's got two 3300, so that would be the number of respawns for that group. Respawn delay in seconds. 300 looks like the cache radius. Um, 150 is the radius in which enemies will pause the spawner um, wait he's got that default is 50 what am I saying one one two three four one two three four oh yeah here we go yep radius at which enemies will pause with the spawner he's got it at 300 but I think it's listed as 150 here um, This is one. This is more of a complicated module that I'll we'll have to go into later. But basically, this is where you come in to read about how you would set it up. Um, anything in the core, which is those modules. So as we've talked about, we've looked at the Acre module. Uh, he's got the admin. I mean, he has a brief description of it. So this is how you would go in and um, figure out what he's. Uh, what he's actually talking about in his config. So if that's any more confusing, just text me or DM me and uh, or DM Auburn. Yeah, DM him instead. No, I'm just kidding. You can do me too as well. User um, joined anyways. your channel. User joined your channel. User joined your channel. John, you piece of shit. <laughs> channel switched. Uh, we have, sorry, everyone came out of the main mission into the main mission room and I was in there and it was quite loud. Anyways, we have uh, an ambient flyby module. Um, if we go back to, uh, where does he have ambient flyby? I know he's got it in here somewhere. Here we go. Flyby. And he talks about how you would set it up and, um, 
how you use it. Uh, AO limit, that's um, that's like uh, in a TVT when you have blue four and red four and you don't want anybody to be outside of those um, that limit. It, it, you would create a marker on the map and you would name that marker or something. That's basically what this AO limit is. Um, are you going to use the briefing module? Uh, if you're going to use Malburn's framework briefing module, you change that to true. Uh, he's got a CBRN module, a countdown module. So if the uh, mission is on a timer, like you only have 60 minutes, uh, then you would change that to true. And let's see if he talks about countdown. Yep, yeah, talks about uh, how to set it up. And again, we'll go over that module later in more detail. Uh, here's the custom channel, like the JTAC channel. Um, if you saw in one of my earlier videos, I think I probably added a, a JTAC channel or something. Um, and this was the uh, code that I put in the, the player or the unit INI, if you remember seeing it. The gear script. Um, should a player's gear be saved if an arsenal is available? True or false? Enable backpack lock. So he's uh, he's either he took it from someone. I mean, he would say it if he did. He gives everybody credit. Let's see what he says. Um, in conditions, followed by gear. Uh, I think maybe he wrote this backpack lock. But basically, it locks your backpack so no one can get into it. Um, it might be for T versus T, but he also has it for co-op. Um, I think enable alternative loadouts is probably where you can choose loadouts upon spawn or respawn. Um, yeah, he talks about how you would set that up. Grass cutter, uh, that's like the grass cutter mod we use in the FK mod set. Do you want that on or off? Are you doing a hostage mission? So it would use a hostage. He's written a hostage script or a module. Uh, if you were, you would change that to true. If you want IEDs, true. If you want to set up Intel, true. Now I have one of my previous missions uh, set up Intel. So, you know, he tells you um, how to set it up here and Right here, this is, there would be a laptop. You would hack the laptop. Um, two just means it's pick up an action or like search for Intel. Uh, hold action, I believe, is the, um, like the animation that it uses or the icon that would use, like the circle with the, the timer that goes around it in a 360. Um, User joined your channel. Channel switched. Um, sorry, people keep joining my channel in TeamSpeak, and they don't realize I'm in the middle channel of switched. making a video. Um, anyway, going back to the config SQF, uh, there's some intro text. I haven't configured it yet, and you can do it in 3D Enhanced as well. But... He's written a module to do it where basically when the mission starts, it shows like the name of the mission in the lower right hand corner, the date and time, and maybe the location. Um, and that's how you set all that up. Uh, JIP, do you want to uh, allow people to join the mission after it started? And it gives you uh, like a timer for how long JIPs can come in. JIPs mean join in progress. Kill cam, I believe the way he's written it is it. It, after you get killed, the camera swings out of your body and shows you the person that killed you. Um, logistics is, uh, I 
think I used it in my mission. I can't remember if I did or not. Um, unpair pylons. You just have to read it. Uh, but it places an RRR in medical functions that can be used in a mission. Uh, the R is part of mission maker amount of resupplies. It also disables the ACE pylon system as well if you enable this module. Um, so you just have to read about it play with it and figure it out or ask questions. Uh, the line of sight tool that's built into like the map screen. There's a line of sight tool you can use in the upper right hand corner and you basically before you start the mission you if you're because some missions some groups plan uh, before they actually get into the game and it's basically a tool used to measure um, like distance and or like can you see from point A to point B. Oh no there's two hilltops in the way so let's you know, take this route or path in. That's what that tool is used for. Map cover. If you've played those missions where you don't see the entire map when you go to your map screen, you only see a portion of the map. That's what uh, that module does. Uh, marker side. I can't remember what marker side is. Marker side. This module allows the mission maker to restrict, restrict the visibility of certain markers so only one side can see them. Okay, well, that's what that one is. I've never used it. It's mortar fire. I think mortar fire is kind of like a um, fire support module. So if you wanted um, virtual uh, mortars or fire support, that's what that module brings in. Orbat is something you would see on the mission screen or the map screen. You can click on uh, like your player and it will show you all the equipment it has and all the players in your team, what equipment they have. Uh, reinsertion. Um, you definitely probably will use this module, so we will go over this one. Uh, but it explains uh, what the different um, uh, settings are for. So do you want a halo type of reinsertion? For respawns, do you want um, uh, like teleport poles? Do you want rally points? Do you want like this, like you lay down a, if you've ever played Malvern's World War II missions, you like lay down this little pup tent or an infantry infantryman's tent, and that would be like a rally point. So when respawns come in, they come in right there uh, or they teleport right there, kind of like a teleport pole. Um, but you need to read, let's see, HAB. Players with tune level leadership can deploy a HAB for the platoon. Any player can TP to the HAB. If enables, players can TP from the HAB to their squad's RP. Um, MRV is a mobile respawn vehicle. Um, and then he tells you how to, how to place these and use them. <clears throat> you definitely need to be familiar with that module. Uh, the retreat module, I believe, is called is actually called tactical withdrawal. Uh, he probably didn't want to use tactical withdrawal because retreat's much shorter. But I, I told him that the U.S. Mill does not use retreat. They use tactical withdrawal. So he changed it uh, in the admin menu to tactical withdrawal. And that's basically saying, um, well, let's say, <laughs> let's say you all need to complete 66% of the tasks to have a mission success but there's a mission timer of 60 minutes and if you only complete 66 percent of the tasks you'll get like the lowest success but you're going to run out of time which would give you a failure so you after you do 66 percent of the tasks you do a tactical withdrawal and you leave the battlefield and quit the game then it would give you the um, the lowest success because you've only completed 66% of the task, but you've uh, but you didn't let the uh, mission timer end. <laughs> um, safety start. That is like team versus team. You start in a certain area and. Um, I believe nobody can fire or no enemy. This module puts the weapon. Ah, this module puts the player weapon on their back at the mission start to prevent misfires. Yeah, I've used that one in my uh, first mission I made. 
Um, and if you turn that on, basically right when you spawn in, you'll see the animation where the your your unit or player is putting his primary shouldering his weapon. Uh, setup timer. <clears throat> this is like mainly for probably team versus team, and you know, blue four has 60 seconds, and maybe red four has 30 seconds to set up. Um, so in a mission for a team versus team like that, I've played in a Vietnam one where the uh, NVA and VC only had they only had to wait 10. Well, actually they they only had to wait 10 seconds. Um, and then they could start setting up, whereas Blue 4 had to wait like 10 minutes. Um, so that way the VC could get all set up and then Blue 4, you know, is coming into their territory. Uh, Snowfall, he has a Snowfall module. Um, I haven't used it and haven't tested it, so I don't know uh, how well it, it looks or if it lags the server out, but he probably wouldn't keep it in there if it lagged it out too bad. And again, scripted missions run smoother or tend to run smoother than Zeus missions. So uh, you probably could run this snowfall if you're not, you know, if you don't have 50 or 60 players in your scripted mission. Supply drop. If you want it for co-op, true. Uh, this is the vehicle type that would deliver it. So you need the... the um, the class name so this is obviously for 2035 or vanilla arma and if we're playing sog those aren't even built yet so i would change this to a huey helicopter or some other helicopter um, and you want the uh, helo to use flares to mark the crate instead of smokes in the daytime the resupply crate yeah you know true or false um but here's the tfar module Unit tracking. What is unit tracking? <clears throat> unit tracking. Uh, this module adds basic unit tracking. It can be used to track groups or objects. Oh, this is your like uh, BFT. Um, so if you want, m you know, moving map markers on the map, uh, you would say true. And is there a refresh rate with that? So if you wanted to delay it, that would be a higher number than one. And then vehicle respawn. Uh, you do have to add some code into that, uh, but you know, he talks about how that code needs to be set up and what these uh, different variables mean, um, but you would turn that on to true. So that's how uh, you, know, you basically use the config SQF. It's like I said, the control panel and controls, you know, turns on what modules you want, turns them off, describes what modules you want, and how to set up that module. Uh, most of his uh, framework, um, if you turn on a module, you have to enter in some kind of code into the playable unit or the vehicle. Um, not most of it, but a lot of it you do. Um, and that's it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, talk to another mission maker, ask Malburn, and we'll see you in the next one.